Okay, the pigeonhole principle is a funny statement, and it says... If you have more pigeons than you have holes, and all the pigeons are going to the holes, then you can prove that there's at least two pigeons in one hole. So this, for this problem, you need to, or for this principle, you need to imagine like a bunch of cubby holes where pigeons sleep. And if you have more pigeons than you have holes, they will start cramming in them. That's what they do, right? They like to perch where they live, and they go sit in the holes. And they sometimes they'll cram together even when there's empty spaces. They don't make sense. They're not very smart. But they're allowed to go wherever they want. You don't have control over the pigeons. They can go wherever they want. You just give them some holes that they can go to. But you can guarantee if there are more pigeons in the holes, at least one of the holes has got a few pigeons crammed in there. Makes sense, right? So what we usually do when we're talking about the pigeonhole principle is we usually think about the most even possible distribution of pigeons. Let's say I could make them do stuff. So I make them go, like, you know, when you go parking for a festival or something, they, like, make you go to the next available spot and they've got people waving you. Go this way. No, don't park over there. You go right here. You have to go to the next available spot. So let's assume we do that with our pigeons. When they come in, you go to the next available spot, and I make you fill it up. So this is the most even distribution we can imagine. When I fill up all the holes, I'm going to wrap around again and start at the beginning and start making them pair up until I fill them all up again. And then if I get even more than twice the number of holes, I start over again. So when we start thinking about how many pigeons we can guarantee are in a hole, we actually think about the case where I'm maximally separating the pigeons as much as possible. What that means is evenly distributing them between the holes. That doesn't mean that that's what we're guaranteeing. We're just saying if they were all spread out as much as possible, we still could guarantee a certain number in each hole. So there's a more general principle is that if you have n pigeons, and we have k holes, then we can guarantee that we have the ceiling of n over k pigeons in one hole. So this is the more general, is if you have n pigeons and k holes, then you can guarantee that there's the ceiling of n over k pigeons in one hole. And this seems really simple, but then you can start to ask some really um, complicated questions. So um, let's ask a question. So you're having a party, and you're going to have n people at the party. And they bring eight cars. If we can guarantee that there exists a car that has at least four people in it, What's the minimum number of people at the party? So again, go back to that uh, most dispersed distribution. If I can guarantee that there are at least four people in the car, that's going to occur. Think about my holes. The cars are the holes. I'm cramming people in holes evenly. So I'm putting one in each car. So. I fill up eight of them, and then I put one in each car, so I have 16. 
and then there's two people in each car, and then I have 16 plus 8 is 24, then I have three people in each car, and then after I fill up that many, three people in each car, that's 24, after I get to 25, that some one of the cars has four people in it, right? So if I have the most even distribution, if I have 25 people, then I can guarantee that there is a car that has at least four people in it. There might be more than one, but the most even distribution, if people try to get as far apart from each other as possible, we can do that with 25 people. So at least one car had to have four people in it. So that's it for today. We'll talk about this some more next time.